Hi, I'm Sabin Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Why is the overshoot a function of the phase margin in closed loop feedback systems? I'm showing here a power conversion system. Here is the power stage. This is the control. It's a feedback system. And we know that the behavior of this system for, say, a step in the input or disturbance it really depends on the phase margin. For example, if the phase margin here it is, is small, smaller than 60 or 45, say, then the response to a step will be sort of with an overshoot. Here's the overshoot. And also in the frequency domain, we're going to see this hump, this peak, as we go to where the end of the bandwidth, okay? So the overshoot and the hump that we have here are a function of the first margin. This is very well known, of course. And the question is, why? Why is this so? And in this presentation, I'm going to show, first of all, that a closed-loop system with a small first margin, smaller, say, than 45 degrees, behaves as a second-degree system. And that the overshoot then depends on the Q of this equivalent circuit. So in this presentation, I'm developing a new generic model of a feedback system around the crossover frequency. I am proving that the closed loop feedback system behaves as a second order system. This is a sort of a easy and friendly and intuitive proof. And then I'm going to show some interesting new relationship between the phase margin and the pole location. So here is the problem. We have the loop gain this is the loop gain of a system, and this is the crossover, and we know that the critical point here is this crossover frequency, the crossover point. I'm showing here a case in which we have a slope of minus 20 dB per decade, and then we have a slope of 40 dB per decade, that is, we have a first order pole here, and there is an intersection here, and we can understand, I'm going to discuss it, that the first margin here will be smaller than 45 degrees in this case, if we are beyond the pole here. Notice that it is not important what is the history here, as long as we arrive at the crossing point with at minus 20 dB and then there is a minus 40 dB, and I'm talking about a minimum phase system, that is that within this region there is no right half plane zero. Then if this is minus 20 dB and this is minus 40 dB, we can say something about the phase which is related one to one. Here is 90 degrees, minus 90 degrees, and there is an, another leg due to this pole. So let's have a look how this uh, behavior here is built from. We have actually a line here, minus 20 dB per decade, a response here, which is like a uh, integrator. And then we have another pole here, a first order pole at W0. And then the combination of these two, that is the product in the linear scale or the sum in the logarithmic scale, brings about this behavior. Here it is. This is the end result of this line and this first pole. And here we have a break. Okay? Now, since we have a break here, then I can already say that the phase here the added leg to the, due to this pole, the added leg, is according to arc tangents omega L, which is this point here that I'm interested in, and the location of the pole. This is the added leg. And then we have 180 due to the negative feedback, and then we have 90 degree due to this line here. So this is the phase margin, okay? The phase margin in this particular case 180 minus 19 minus one arc tangents this ratio, and this is the phase margin here, okay? So here is the picture. We have minus 20 dB, then we have minus 40 dB, and then we have these two points here, the two frequencies that I'll be talking about. One is the original place of the single pole here that we have, and the other one is the intersection here. So now comes a very interesting observation. If I label this height or gain, you might say as k, and since this is minus 40 dB per decade, 
then I can certainly say that the omega L over omega zero square is equal to K actually over one, okay? Because this slope is minus 40 dB, which means to the power of two. So that omega L over omega zero square is K, and therefore there is a clear relationship between this ratio and K. Now, what about this line? This line goes down and then it hits this point at K, okay? So I can say that the equation or expression that uh, describes this line is K omega zero over S because at omega zero, when S is omega zero, J omega is omega zero, it is K. So this is this, the, the expression for this line. Now we know what is K, this is K, so I can express this k omega zero as omega l square over omega zero, and here it is. So this is the slope here. So now the combined transfer function here in this region is this times this, and here it is. This is therefore the loop gain around this range. So this is the loop gain around this crossover frequency. Now we know that the closed loop response is equal to the open loop response over one plus the loop gain. We know what is the loop gain. I can walk it out, and here is what I'm getting. I'm just looking at the denominator because the behavior of the system will be dependent on the characteristic equation, which is this, and this is a second order equation. Now, I have here a template of a second order equation here it is, this is S squared, this is the resonant frequency, I've labeled it differently, not to confuse it with omega zero we have here. And then we have this parameter Q, this is the template of a second order system, and I can work this out to look like this template by, of course, this omega L is equivalent or related to omega R squared, and then by pulling out and dividing out some terms, I get this expression here. So looking at this and this, I can see that this here is Q. This is the quality factor of the system, okay? So Q is omega L over zero. Now Q is now related to the square of K because omega L over omega zero square is k, so, so the square root of k is omega l over omega zero. Here it is. Okay, is q square. Okay, k is q square. Very amazing. It turns out that this parameter here, this height here, it has a lot of meaning and affects many things in the system. So. Now I know, and this is very well known, that the overshoot of a second order system is dependent on the Q factor. Here is this equation. I know what is Q. It's omega L over omega zero or square root of K of this thing here. So it's amazing. We have uh, K, we know it's uh, Q square, and then we can go on and say the following. Now, we know that the phase margin is this expression, which I've already talked about. And this is now, turns out to be a square root of K and equal to Q. This is the phase margin. We see now already a relationship between the phase margin and Q. And therefore, it'll be a relation between the phase margin and the overshoot. Here it is, this relationship. And now, knowing that this phase margin is equal to this expression, and this is square root of k, or q, I can actually turn around and express q, or square root of k, as a function of trigonometric function of this thing, which turns out to be 180 minus 90 minus the phase margin, okay? So this now is the expression that will determine Q. So we have a relationship, a clear relationship between Q and the phase margin. And on the other hand, if we know the phase margin, 
then we know the Q and we know the overshoot. So here I've prepared some plots for this particular situation, which is very common. We have minus 20 and then minus 40 dB slopes. And what I'm showing here is the relationship between the phase margin and Q according to this equation. Okay, here it is. Very nice. And then I've also plotted the overshoot itself as a function of the phase margin. And you see that at uh, 45, uh, we have like uh, 0.15, actually I've written here 0.16, then 16%. But then as the phase margin goes lower and lower, then of course the overshoot will be larger and larger. I've also plotted, this is the standard equation, this is well known, the relationship between the overshoot and Q. You see that for small Q, of course, the overshoot is small, and then you go to a higher quality factor, you get a much higher, higher uh, overshoot. So now what about the bandwidth of the closed loop system? Now, usually we define bandwidth as the drop of minus three dB from the flat portion here, okay? Now, obviously, it depends on the behavior here. It's maybe it's not that important, but it's kind of interesting to see what is the value of this uh, minus three dB point, or frequency of the minus three dB. Now, this hump here, or this resonant frequency, is the uh, crossover frequency. That's what it is, okay? So, um, here I've plotted the case for various Q values. This is Q1, which is 45 degrees, and then it goes 45 degree phase margin, and then it goes up and up for smaller and smaller phase margins. And then I can look up at the cr crossing of the minus three dB. You see that it is a little bit higher here, and here they are sort of getting to be sort of together here, like point 1.7. There is a mismatch, a slight mismatch between this equation, which is very well known in the literature, and what I found here in the simulation, I really don't know the exact reason for the slight mismatch. It's a small mismatch, and um, but from practical purposes, we understand that we are in the range of, like, say, 50% uh, more of the frequency, like, uh, instead of, this is normalized frequency, one, so it's like uh, 1.5 uh, normalized frequency. So, what are the conclusions of this presentation? First of all, we found that closed-loop feedback system with small phase margin really behave as a second-order system, and the Q of the system, and hence the overshoot, are a function of the phase margin, and also that the Q and the phase margin are dependent on the gain of the loop gain here, the gain here, this K, the height of this breakpoint in a very clear relationship to the other parameters like the Q and the phase margin and the things that we are really interested in this uh, behavior of the feedback system. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you have found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.